lest anyone believe that I am confused, conflicted, or on the fence about what I believe. I thought this picture might clear that up for you. The reason I brought this up is tomorrow a certain individual is going to be visiting the White House under invitation who has no business being anywhere within our borders much less in our White House. Now, I don't normally read scripture, but in this scripture, the ministry of the Twelve, go not in the way of the Gentiles into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not, but rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go preach, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely ye have received, freely give. Provide neither gold, silver, brass, nor script for your journey. When you come into a house, salute it. And the part that was the most important was down here. And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your words, when you depart out of that house or that city, shake off the dust of your feet. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. And if he shall neglect to hear them, this is later on in Matthew, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as a heathen man and a publican. See, we're not supposed to be getting all chummy chummy with uh, heathens. And believe me, this guy fits the bill. This is Muhammadu Bahari. He's the leader of Nigeria. I've covered him before. Took power in a coup. Sent out his soldiers with whips to make sure that people were standing in line properly. Came uh, back from Saudi Arabia, I believe, or it was one of his uh, lieutenants with 53 uninspected suitcases from Saudi Arabia. quoted as hoping that the agitation for the promotion of Sharia law, which is virtually the opposite of Christianity, would not stop all across the world. This is who is getting invited to the White House. Now, Christian or secular, this guy is a horrible dude and has no place anywhere near the White House. I brought this up because of these people. All of a sudden now we're best buddies with dictators. All of a sudden now we're just willing to sit down and talk with them and uh, hash all things out and, and put everything behind us like the murder of Otto Warmbier. The uh, heinous criminal who did the horrible crime of removing a poster from a wall who was beaten and tortured and held in prison for 15 months delivered back to us where he died if uh, let's see if I can find it here yeah we used to know what to do with dictators we really did if this guy here he wants to have a meeting where he is going to submit himself to answer to justice for the millions that have died in North Korea. And for this one U.S. citizen, there's also three more that are being held there. Then I'm all about it. Yeah, if he wants to have a meeting where he symbolically turns himself over to our commander-in-chief to be held pending trial, then sure, anything else is ridiculous. 
And I think I've made my case for that. This guy, I don't get. I really don't get how uh, you can give this guy who threatened to nuke Guam, who threatened to nuke the United States, who has and his father have been two of the most evil despots on the planet. can now all of a sudden just say, oh, yeah, we want peace now, and so we'll sit down, and here's what we'll do, we'll deal, we'll not uh, do nukes anymore, and then all of your soldiers leave. Really? Here's an idea, you turn yourself over, and maybe we'll let you spend the rest of your life in prison and not give you the death penalty. Maybe. I mean, what the hell happened to treating dictators like you're supposed to treat dictators? We're going to sit down and give this guy credibility after he murdered a U.S. citizen for removing a poster? Seriously. What what world are we living in now? I, I really don't... Uh, I don't understand. I brought up this graphic... Because there's also been this talk of this other alleged dictator down in Venezuela. It's funny, you go down there, and I know that probably most people in my audience have not visited places like Colombia or Ecuador or Venezuela. I would fear much more for my life in Colombia than I would in Venezuela. You're right, it would probably be harder to get things to eat, and there would be all sorts of other problems, but... It's a Christian country. I could walk down the street with a Bible, not worry about it. Try that in the in Nigeria. Try walking down the street carrying a Bible and talking with your friends about the uh, love of Jesus Christ, or go sit in a shop and and have a Bible study. See how that goes over in Nigeria. You do it in Venezuela. You might have a few people sit down and begin talking with you. See, this is 2005. Here's the projections for 2025. The last great hope for Christianity in the world is Latin America. Because they will. They will fight and they will defend it. The biggest charismatic Christian movement in the world is in South America. It's not in Asia. There's not a single government down there that has any problem at all with Christians. Try to find that in Africa. Try to find that in Asia. Hell, try to find it here. I really um, want you folks to be clear about who I am and where I stand and what I believe. I've heard people say, and I've, it absolutely floors me about how they believe, well, God is working through Donald Trump, regardless of all of the evil that, you know, we will go ahead and grant you that he's done. We believe that, you know, God can work through everybody, yeah, everybody except Hillary Clinton, everybody except Barack Obama. No, God couldn't possibly work through them because they're just completely outside the love of God. They're outside of forgiveness. They are outside of anything, because of course your YouTube channel videos that have told you that. It's this cognitive dissonance thing. You're so willing to believe, most people, I don't want to broad brush everybody, this nonsense about what's going on in Venezuela, and you think it's perfectly fine for the U.S. to go down there and invade and rip this guy out of there because he's so terrible, but in the same breath you're perfectly fine with bilateral talks with Muhammad Buhari and Kim Jong Un. It, I just can't. I'll pray for y'all. I really will. Pray for me too. So that we can all see the truth and we can all come together because I don't see you as my enemy. But 
the group of people that over the last 8 to 16 years that were talking about the Constitution and talking about truth and talking about being suspicious of big government and of our government have all of a sudden gone off the rails because they want to follow one guy because they think that they won something because they think that this guy's different and they're so emotionally invested in that belief system that they can't see what's going on and that's why my channel's here just to try to wake folks up so anyway like share subscribe god bless y'all and we will see you later thank you